was once, but there's still time. Well, there's something undoubtedly compelling about this matchup. Yes, on the face of it, it's a lopsided rivalry. O'Sullivan, as has been well documented already, has won 13 of their 14 meetings. But we've heard about their history, which goes all the way back to their junior days. They were regular practice partners. And you heard O'Sullivan's respect for Carter. He knows, having seen him at close quarters throughout his career, how good Carter can be. And of course, Carter that. shares that respect. Apparently, O'Sullivan has asked for a glass of hot water, which is not unusual for him. Can't wait for this. Here we go. Just a shame, Joe, that there aren't thousands packed in to watch this match, but there are many millions watching at home, and I'm sure they'll be thoroughly enjoying what they watch. Yeah, just like us. Totally compelling viewing. Ted certainly favours our Sullivan 13-1. Oh, look at that for a shot. Well, Ali Carter refused a red to the left corner. Played it with some safety in mind. And he missed it. The cue ball was in the bulk area. The red could have come back down the table. What a marvellous pot. I was saying the head to head certainly favours O'Sullivan, but the last time they played was the World Championship. Before that, it was seven years. Five. Only O'Sullivan won. So they've only played once in the last seven years, and Ali Carter won that one. Still got another red after this one, but he might just leave an angle. Reds up. 14. Can also try and leave an angle on the loose red to open them. That's not it. 21. Sullivan 21. Carter appearing in his 23rd ranking semi final. Sullivan in his 78th. In fact, Sullivan coming into this has played 147 semi finals in his career and he's won almost three quarters of them. them a bit thick he's had a little bit of luck there he's covered the red nearest the right corner 
and also got the hamper on the other reds. I'm going to go at this red. The way he played the shot, he was always going to be leaving a chance at this red to the right corner. If he'd have just played the cue ball to the middle pocket, screwed back towards the middle, it would have been completely safe. And it would have made the pot easier. Sullivan, as he has been wont to do this week, taking his time and deciding exactly how he wants to play the shot, and still... Yeah, he can't quite see enough of the shot, Philip. And he was thinking of playing safe off the red. Looking for his third consecutive Northern Ireland Open final appearance, of course. Trump has denied him in the past two years. Well, that didn't go according to plan. He's pushed one over that right corner. In contact with the yellow, makes the pot just that little bit easier. One. Well, yes, Carter has only got one win over O'Sullivan, but what a win. Yeah, and it was the last one as well. It takes a lot to beat that man over three sessions at the Crucible, and Carter thoroughly merited that victory as well. He made a fantastic 50-odd clearance when balls were glued to cushions to move 12-9 up in the closing stages of that match when it looked as though O'Sullivan, who was 50-odd in front, was going to go to 11-10 behind. That was the key moment of that match, and you saw in our pictures before this match got underway what it meant to him to finally get the better of O'Sullivan on the big stage. Five. And this is another one today. And if one of these reds goes to the left corner, and it does, it's tight, but it goes, he can get to the black. And that will give him a chance of winning this frame. Six. Fourteen. Need those two safe reds. It's a cushion. There's a lot riding on this match for Carter, besides just beating his old rival. If he does win today, then he'll be right on the cusp of returning to the top 16. And if he wins the tournament, he'll be back in the 16 with the Masters in the new year in mind. And of course, he went all the way to the final of that tournament earlier this year. 22. Ironically, because his opponent today elected to withdraw 
Allowing Carter in. He made the most of it, didn't he? Beat Selby, Higgins and Murphy. He was 7-5 up in the final against Bingham. Playing superbly. And unfortunately for him, the final mid-session interval came at the wrong time. It disrupted his momentum. Bingham played superbly thereafter to win 10-8. Nonetheless, he picked up a cool £100,000 for his week's work. 35. Forty three. Forty four. Fifty one. Fifty two. He can win this frame without need of the two awkward reds, so what a chance for Carter to make a great start. Fifty eight. Two seven points the lead. So it does need these two reds, but it shouldn't be a problem. Well, he's got the ideal angle to bring those reds into play, but he needs to stay well away from them. Could have done with that cue ball. Just coming back a touch further, being straighter on the pink. Would have meant things simple to get to that last red above the black. Just going away from the red. So just a little bit more pressure on this shot than it should have been. Handled it well. The perfect start then. Sullivan needs a snooker. Seventy one. He was in first, the world champion. Looks like Carter's going to have the last word in this opening frame. The difference now, 43 on, so Sullivan has thinks Dan needs two snookers. Interesting to see if he plays on. And he Carter's 71. Well, he played on against Matthew Stevens when he needed about 10, so never in doubt, I think. Occasion, he just used it as potting experience just to get the feel of the table. Here, 
he's playing on to try and win. He can see the red behind the pink. He wants to leave the red on the cushion, but He's cutting the red towards that left corner and doesn't want to leave O'Sullivan with an easy shot at the red to get the black into play. Get the black back on its spot. Shouldn't be too concerned about bringing the red off the cushion. Still needs two snookers, and <clears throat> he won't be wanting to pop both reds, so Sullivan. So it doesn't matter if he brings the red off, as long as he gets it safe. He could come off the black cushion and push the red towards the other red. If he comes off the side cushion, he could go in off. Carter has said he arrived at this tournament with zero confidence. He'd only won two matches this season before this one. He also mentioned to Andy and Jimmy in the studio after his quarter-final win that he's made a few adjustments to his cue, which he's very pleased with, but it's taken him a while to get used to them. He lost to Nigel Bond in his first match after those adjustments in German Masters qualifying. So close to finishing this frame for sure, but he seems to be adjusting to it pretty well this week. Sullivan's doing the maths. If he pots the blue, he'll be 44 behind with 35 on, so he'd need three snookers. He needs the black, really, doesn't he? Six. Sullivan six. Bring that red to the red game after that. Strange decision that to take the blue, I thought. Three snookers on Sullivan. I have thought that the black is in a good spot for snookers, which it is.
I think the level of application has been the feature of O'Sullivan's run to this semi-final this week. He's not always produced fireworks. At times he's been outplayed as he was early against Ding Junhui in the quarterfinals last evening. But he's given every shot 100% and it's clearly paid off. Long odds in this one, but he's getting a feel for the conditions in the process. of the double kiss <laughs> it's just what he got forty four the difference only thirty five left Sullivan still needs three snookers past you might have seen an opponent of O'Sullivan play on in this situation to try and disrupt his rhythm shown a lot of patience this week the reigning world champ happy to get down in the weeds if necessary to get the job done Carter won't be phased at all by that either one of his great attributes is his Tough match play skills. Be delighted to have got that break of 71 and put himself very much as favourite in this first frame. Sullivan's average shot time at the moment, 23 seconds. That's snail's pace for him. Far away, this. Maybe why he didn't want to move the black. It really is in a good spot. Doesn't leave a free ball. You're acknowledging the quality of that snooker. Lots of right hand side on the cue ball to create the angle to get in behind the black. And as I say, must give the free ball some thought here. Oh, well, if you'd have missed it, that could have been a free ball, but he's hit it, so it's hunky-dory. Didn't want that. Didn't want that at all. This has got to go in. It's a really good pot, actually. Well <laughs> cued. And Bielta. Good shot. Still needs three snookers, though. Eight. No chance of three balls now. Mm. He has, but he only get two points for it. Red was still on the table, he could have got eight points. I'm surprised he's playing on now. Just getting the feel of the table, as Philip said. Well, as I mentioned, he 
did this when he needed a whole lot more than three snookers against Matthew Stevens, who looked a little perplexed at the time, but of course he's perfectly entitled to play on till such time as all the balls disappear, necessary. Can't argue with his strategy this week. He's in his 78th ranking semi-final, going for his 54th final which, of course, he's won a record-breaking 37. Just enjoying the battle this week. He's thoroughly loving being out there, and the longer he can be out there, the happier he is. And always been the case, as we know, with O'Sullivan. Opening frame now to its 27th minute. Doesn't necessarily mean that O'Sullivan won't carry on. Great pot, though. Five. And another. Can't see him carrying on now. 22 left, 41 the difference. Ali Carter, five. There's one player who won't be remotely nonplussed by this, though. It's Carter. He knows O'Sullivan inside and out. He would have expected something a little quirky today. Five snookers now required. Sullivan four. Five. Well, it feels like a very long time ago that Carter was making his frame winning break of seventy one. Five on the frame, Ali Carter. And this time, belatedly, 
the six times a reigning world champion concedes. Carter, though, off to the perfect start for him. He leads 1-0. Welcome back to semi-finals day, an eagerly awaited one for sure. Ali Carter putting his wits once again against Ronnie O'Sullivan and making the perfect start as he bids for just his second win over the six times champion of the world in 15 attempts. O'Sullivan playing on right down to the final blue for the five snookers he needed at that stage. O'Sullivan doing what he's done already this week making the most of his table time, but Carter not phased, and he has the lead. First to six, of course, now in the semi-finals. For a place in the showpiece tomorrow, which is over the best of 17, we'll have the usual interval after four. And although Sullivan's won 13 out of 14, four of those have gone to the wire. Carter won their most recent one, perhaps their most memorable. Good opening red, though, from Ronnie. He potted a stupendous red, Joe, at the start of the first frame. Really did, and that was a belter. But it's just run on a little too far, this cue ball. And even if he can get to the black, it's tough to get to the next red and pot it. No. Nope. Oh, wait a minute. It just ran up the hill there. Did you see it? Yeah, the black just seemed to curl to the left, and I've said this right from the very beginning. Look at this again. Watch this. It's going to the right-hand angle there, and then it just turns yeah. slightly to drop in the pocket. Well, maybe he knows that. I don't know if O'Sullivan's any good at bowls as well as snooker. 16. Had a bit of bias on it, didn't it? 17. Now we may go into the reds here. Doesn't have to. Still got two reds he can play for. Just getting his arm going a little bit. 
24. Three reds, three blacks. On 25. That's got a few more open. Oh, that went to the near angle as well. And if he can't see this red Carter, he's been very fortunate. There's no amount of bias was ever going to allow that one to drop. Surprise miss from O'Sullivan. Under a bit of early pressure after Carter's good start. But he's dodged a bullet, hasn't he, as Joe mentioned, in not leaving one. Oh, absolutely, because he could have left the easy one to the right corner, but he could have also left the one to the bought corner, but left neither. He has left a touching ball. Mixed feelings for Carter. Pleased to be back at the table so soon, which he wouldn't have expected, but frustrated not to have a red to go at. Referee Paul Collier having a good old look there. Collier, who, until Marcel Eckhart refereed the world final back in the summer, was the youngest ever to have that accolade. And Marcel is helping him out today as marker. Eckhart just 30 years of age when he oversaw O'Sullivan's sixth world title at the expense of Kyron Wilson. Experienced referee, one of the best in the business. Couldn't see a way back to the bulk area without the risk. It's finished up okay. Speed, the cue ball, the safety. Up tonight, of course, the defending champion Judd Trump looking to become the first player since Hendry back in the mid 90s to win the same ranking event three years in a row up against David Grace. What a tournament he's had! World number 67 into his second ranking semi final. He made the UK semis five years ago, fell off the tour a couple of years back. Said ahead of his showdown with Trump this evening, he's got absolutely nothing to lose. That's coming up from a quarter to seven tonight. Of course, the possibility of Trump O'Sullivan three in this oh, tournament still looms large. But it's Carter. Who's made the better start? Was yeah. not Clearly. exactly bang on, but one's happy, so here we go again. Risky way to play the snooker escape. It's a let off. Oh, or is it? Well, 
He raises his hands, but we're delighted he's left O'Sullivan right in amongst the balls there. Had to wait a while to get the rub of the green against Kurt Mafflin, but he hasn't had to wait long here. What a fluke that was. But only significant if he can make full capital from it. He's a kiss. Six. I think that was full enough. Looking at taking the red on into the yellow pocket, leaving the cue ball somewhere near the right middle. It'd be on the blue or the black if it went in. We could only leave what is plain. Ali Carter, six. Well, that's got to be disappointing for Carter not to have prospered from the fluke. It's off for O'Sullivan. This is a real thin shot. He's taking this red on. Looking at his tip a few times this week. It's just a stray fiber around the edge. He's not a man to be rushed in this tournament. He's known as the rocket, but at the moment his average shot time is 25 seconds. Not fired yet. Has he got away with it? Yes, he has. Difficult to tell from this camera angle. play the really thin cut into the left corner there's a danger that he might leave that red on if he played it time I think he has left the red on he certainly left the one on to the left corner can you see enough of this easier one well from there it's very very tight Can O'Sullivan see enough of the red? One. The answer is yes. Now he could go into that pack of reds here. It looks very inviting. Perfectly played. The right speed. Everything was done to order there. To 
push reds to a cushion. And now they're all there for the taking. Seven. Collier keeping a beady eye on O'Sullivan's foot there to ensure that still touching the ground as he played the shot, which of course is the rule. And he was on the stretch, but no problem. So a really good chance here for O'Sullivan to even the score. Already 22 points in front. The Reds looking inviting, colours available. Yeah, but he mustn't miss. As easy to say, they're all there. Just thought he would have played the blue and screwed the cue ball off the black cushion to the left side cushion. Well, left handed. Twenty-six. Twenty-seven. And getting the black back on its spot again makes things just that little bit easier. Forty-two points the difference. He could play for the red behind the black spot. It's far, far enough away from the cushion. Red and the colour should be on as even. A chance at the long red. This time he came to the table, Ollie Carter. Yes, and of course, he had that big slice of luck earlier in the piece with the flute, which he couldn't capitalise on. The applause is for the end of this frame, barring snookers. 50. So O'Sullivan joins the party. It's as intense as we expected and hoped it would be. Players very dialed in. in their bid to make another major final. Hard to remember hasn't won a ranking title. Since the World Open. Four years ago. And change so 66 be a timely return to a ranking title match for him, but he's got to get past this guy. Yep, and just enough on from the century 1067th if he makes it 75. And just his fourth this week, which is modest by O'Sullivan standards. 
found different ways to win throughout this tournament. He's shown the patience of Job to get the rounds in the bag. Something different today. 87. Yeah, a little shorter pace, so we have to go all the way around the table. Who wants to carry on with the century? Looks good. And the crowd liked that one, if they'd have been here. Just six minutes this break has taken. And a timely reminder of the brilliance of Ronnie O'Sullivan. His sixth century of the season, and honours are even. It's one each. So it's set up beautifully here on semi-finals day at the Northern Ireland Open at the Marshall Arena, Milton Keynes. Ali Carter missing a red. A brilliant century then from Ronnie O'Sullivan. Took his time in developing the break. So Sullivan to break off in frame three. Happy to be on the board. Just wonder if he can see enough of the red that's at the back of the pack there. He addressed the shot that now changed his mind. Well, all the early signs are that this match is certainly going to live up to its billing. O'Sullivan responding to 
Carter's opening salvo of 71 with that brilliantly constructed century. Battle well and truly joined. Six, of course, is the target. He's pushed one to that right corner and he needs a bit of luck here. And that's kind of like getting a fluke, you know. I, I know Carter got one in the last frame, but they're kind of like flukes because if you can see the red, he's every chance of winning the frame because that's how well both these boys are playing. Fortunate. Yes, and O'Sullivan has always been pretty philosophical about what happens on the table in terms of the odd good flick, fluke, etc. He has always appreciated that what goes around comes around in that regard. He's never bemoaned getting a kick, just gets on with the job. Sometimes it goes for you, sometimes against, but the key is what you make of the luck that comes your way. And Carter, as you mentioned there, Joe, wasn't able to do so in the first fr in the frame just gone when he got the flute. Yes, and there again, you see, he could have got a hamper, which would have made this red very tough, but the cue ball has just run on. That extra inch. Can cue this red now. This is the more difficult red, the long straight one. The other one, okay, the cue ball could be going into the pack of reds, but less chance of missing it. There's more pressure with this long straight red. He'd be leaving the other red if he missed it. That's the one he's taking. Four out of six from long range so far. Hit the wrong side of that one. Fortunately, moved the easy red, although still left the red to the middle. Missed it by a long way, didn't he? Is it full ball? In the end, it was comfortable for O'Sullivan last night against Ding Junhui. But let's not forget, in the early stages, he was being outplayed. Ding made two big breaks, including a century in the first two frames. He had a great chance to lead 3-1 at the interval. And his challenge faded thereafter pretty dramatically. But in the early stages, O'Sullivan was under the pump. I actually think Ding Junhui got overconfident. Yeah, this has been a feature of the week as well, O'Sullivan seemingly troubled by something with his tip which looks on the face of it pretty new to me Seven. well it's another chance for carter and could play a little little cannon to that red above and to the right of the black Carter, like O'Sullivan, has made four centuries this week, so he scored heavily when presented with the chance to do so. Had to show a lot of patience early in his match with Kurt Mathlin, who seemed to have the rub of the green early on in taking a 2-0 lead. Of course, coming back to win 5-3. 15. Oh, well, did it just nudge the pink into a potable position? 
Just watch this, if we see the end of the shot. He tried to screw the cue ball right through the reds, but then all of a sudden, the red hit the pink. Obviously, it doesn't go. Be playing it. Sorts of extras required here to reach the black. Carter now 41 years of age, and of course O'Sullivan will turn 45 in the first week of December. Awkward this, isn't it? Fifteen. Well, clearly, Sullivan not satisfied with his tip, so out comes the sandpaper. Never been shy of changing a tip, has he, O'Sullivan? I recall many times seeing him bite the tip off his cue at the end of a match, mid-tournament. Use two or three within a tournament, which wouldn't be the receive wisdom, Joe, ordinarily. Well, I remember reading one of Joe Davis's books a long time ago, and he said he wouldn't dream of putting a tip on his cue at least two weeks before a tournament. And I've got to say that it does take quite a while to get used to a tip. It's for somebody like Ronnie O'Sullivan's genius, maybe it's easier for him. Yes, I think with these modern tips, certainly it takes less time than it would have done back in the day to just to the new tip, but even so. Well, again there, Philip, he's had a little bit of run, hasn't he? Ronnie O'Sullivan, that cue ball could have gone anywhere, as could the red, but look where it's landed, right in front of the green, and it's awkward this now for Carter. Seems to be the edge of the tip rather than the bit that comes into contact with the cue ball that's Troubling O'Sullivan. Maybe there's just a stray fibre that's getting in his line of vision, something like that. Anyway, awkward for Carter. Match is getting on for an hour's play now. Early stages of frame three. The indications are we're in for a titanic battle. concern here is that red above the blue. He doesn't want to leave Alicato with a chance of that red. So it's not just a case of playing the cue ball down into the balk area and hoping for the best. He's got to try and stop him attempting that red. Could play the cue ball dead on the cushion behind the green spot. Okay, the green's not there.
It's another very clever safety shot. Can he see the red near the middle pocket? I think he can. He's very good at that shot, and that's another excellent safety, this time from Ali Carter. I've seen him play that shot so many times, he gets very close to the pot, as he did here, but his main concern is getting enough stun and screw on the cue ball to get the cue ball back in the bulk area. He's played it very well. if you can see enough of the red to play the cue ball onto the black cushion. Not what he played, he played to hit the other red. So Ali Carter's won the safety battle. Earned himself a very good chance. One. Yes, it was a great safety from Carter. It had O'Sullivan in trouble and he duly made the error. So what can the four times ranking event winner do with this chance. Just nine frames in the five matches to get to this semi-final, Carter. Took out Dominic Dale, who of course had beaten Mark Williams. Likewise, Ben Wollaston, who'd knocked out Neil Robertson. Before seeing off Mafflin. That comeback victory in the last eight. This is first ever home nation semi-final, Carter. One quarter-final before this tournament in this series that started four years ago, of course, in Manchester, the English Open. No. Black doesn't go into the left corner, so obviously he'd like to remove that red and stopping the black going in there, but I'm not sure if you can see enough of it. No, back up for the blue. Got no option this time but to try and play for that red. Someone where the cue ball is now would be okay. Preferably, preferably a little bit further towards the pocket. That looks okay. Needs a little bit of an angle 15. to get the cue ball back out, otherwise, it's a deep screw shot which he's well capable of, but you don't really want to play those. <clears throat> Dear, uh, how important is that going to be?
I don't think he's left an easy red. I don't think he's left an easy red, but it's the miss more than anything else because he could have won the frame there. Well, you he's saw his reaction, Joe. Said it all, didn't it? Such a great safety to set up the chance. But O'Sullivan finds the far jaw at the centre pocket, and what a chance he may have left here for Carter. He was a little fortunate, wasn't he, Ali? You know, he missed the red. And he didn't leave an easy one on. That was a very tough pop to the middle that Sullivan was attempting. Yes, and having been given that reprieve, 30 in front, you feel as though Carter has to make O'Sullivan pay here. Always going to the far jaw. He's going to tie the black up when he pops the black here. I think only available into the left corner, uh, left middle. Unless he disturbs something here. What he tried to do. Still not straightforward this, has to go down for the blue. Nine. Could have got to the pink, but that's a, a poor positional shot, and that's end of break. So two really good chances for Carter in this frame. Green. Green ball. I thought he would have gone down for the blue there because he was guaranteed, really, to get on to the blue, going down the angles. Well, time will tell whether Carter has missed the boat there. It's still tricky for O'Sullivan, 39 behind. Bought cushion, he's got to be careful, but Carter will be frustrated that he didn't kill the frame off. Tried, tried to play the green to the cushion. Yeah, attempting to play onto the pink last time round. It was a, a very tight gap he was trying to get into there. Didn't quite make it. No, Ollie Carter doesn't want to touch the red next to the black. Just cut the red thin to the right side cushion. Give himself some more insurance. Again, I'm surprised he's played it that way. He could have clipped the red to the cushion. Been near the same spot. Tough old match play snooker this, isn't it, in the early running. O'Sullivan's average shot time remains over 25 seconds, which is almost unheard of. Carter up closer to 30 seconds per shot, but no less compelling. Yeah, he's forced the mistake again, though. Ali Carter, good safety. Sullivan catching the red much too thick. One. 
So a third chance then for Carter to retake the lead. Admitted that he hasn't found lockdown easy. Misses the fans as we all do, of course, at these big events while appreciating the fact that he can still earn a living and that all of these tournaments remain on, which is down to the Herculean efforts of all the staff at World Snooker. He's found something this week after a sticky start to the season. His only real Seven. ranking highlight last season was a semi-final at the European Masters, where he lost heavily to Robertson. But of course, the Masters was a reminder of just how good he can be against the very best on one of the biggest stages in the game. Twelve. And it's got to have helped that having lost his first 13 meetings with O'Sullivan, he finally got the better of him. So he now knows if he didn't know before that he can beat him. Made a pretty good start to trying to beat him again today. Clinch this chance. 13. Well, he's overscrewed that one. I'm sure he was playing for the pink to the right middle. And maybe chance to put another colour safe. He attempted to put the green safe last time round. Not really safe. Probably gone for the brown. Well, it's not often that you have three chances against a player like O'Sullivan and prevail in not taking them, not clinching the frame. Yeah, he's put the yellow safe, but I think the brown on the right side cushion would have been a good shot. Need one more red, Carter. Sullivan would need one snooker. Four. Could have done without those four points and he could have done without being in Bork here. Because O'Sullivan may attempt one of these long reds. Gives him a, another little leeway to take smaller colours now. percent long part success that should cost him the game yes it's not been clinical from Carter in this frame this is his fourth opportunity to put this frame to bed but surely there'll be no mistake this time Sullivan started off well with his long pots but he's missed a few more recently to be two one down one more frame to come before the interval. It's not really fired in the way he would have liked, albeit that, of course, he did make the century in the second frame. But a few errors as well from O'Sullivan. Seven. Applause for frame ball. Albeit of the synthetic variety, sadly. Carter has got to be happy with the start he's made. Yes, he's not hit the heights himself yet, but he's competing as we would have expected. 
with every fibre of his being and 13. he's got his nose in front again. Twenty nine minute opening frame. The second was 19. nearly eighteen minutes long, and this one has been going for nearly twenty seven. So it's been pedestrian. 20. It's been intense and very watchable. 26. Ali Carter, 26. sure I can do the maths as to how many snookers O'Sullivan requires here. Suffice to say, it's a hell of a lot. Ronnie O'Sullivan, two. Don't think he has the need to get a feel for the table anymore. We've been going for about an hour and 20 minutes. Yeah, I'm not sure why he played on that. Maybe just to get a bit of pot in practice, but Refuse the green. Seven. I think Dave Hendon described him as he was closing in on his sixth world title back in the summer as unconventional. Well, I don't think anyone would argue with that. But he's going to be 2 1 behind. 18. Carter's got to be happy with the start he's made. Yes, he needed four scoring opportunities to win this frame, but he's won it. That's all that matters. And he's won it handsomely, and so he's guaranteed to be at least level going into the mid-session interval, but he could yet prevail with a 3-1 advantage. He leads 2-1.
25 minutes of frame so far in our first Northern Ireland Open semi-final. So brisk it ain't, but it's certainly an interesting start to proceedings. O'Sullivan has been irked by something with his tip. He's been playing on for snookers when, Three. frankly, there was no need. And he's 2-1 down to Ali Carter, who needed four chances to put that previous frame away, and it would have hurt if he'd failed to do so, for sure, but he did, and that's all that matters. We've had two breaks, 71 from Carter, four, century three. from O'Sullivan to level. To Carter, who will be hoping that he can now push on to a 3-1 interval lead as he breaks off in frame four. Six is the target, of course, for a meeting with either David Grace or the defending and two times champion Judd Trump. They do battle this evening from seven. Sullivan's long potting has been a little awry since a very good start in that regard. Clearly that was a tough one. Just a reminder, we're on air. Eurosport 1 from a quarter to seven. Andy Goldstein, Jimmy White, Alan McManus with the build-up ahead of Trump bidding for his third consecutive title here. What an achievement that would be to match what Hendry did with three successive UKs in the mid-90s. It's the last time it happened. Of course, on the previous two occasions, this man at the table was his opponent. Two cracking finals as well. Outstanding. Last year's one, there were six centuries, four of them from Trump. 16 breaks of over 50. No one would mind a third meeting, but... Carter has got something to say about that, as will David Grace. Big occasion for him tonight, five years after his only other semi-final at the UK Championship. Good safety, just where he wanted the cue ball. Yeah, he's bossed the safety battle so far, Carter. 26 out of 28 he's been successful with, 92, very nearly 93%. Sullivan down at 73, which is low for him, as is his pot success of 83. When you consider that he's made a century, that 
be even lower, significantly so, in the two frames he's lost. Just might be tempted at this red. He didn't get that cue ball tight in amongst the reds. If he can cue this, it's worth a little go. Like it. Awkward queuing. Carter, like O'Sullivan, more than happy to play the patience game today. All he's interested in is getting to six. He doesn't care how he does it or how long it takes. to four out of 11 from distance now, O'Sullivan. Got pretty close with that one. Some more difficult than others when you're taking long pots on though. It's close. That's all it is. One thing that you can say about Ronnie O'Sullivan, though, he is competing. He's trying his hardest. He's being put in trouble. He's had some good safety played against him, as the safety success proves. 29 out of 31, Ollie Carter. So he's put him under pressure, but he's competing. Mm. Now, a mistake there from Ollie Carter. But hasn't left anything easy. This red is on to the right corner, but it's a difficult pot. If the black goes, it's a lot easier. If not, then it's difficult to get back to the blue. Yeah, let's not forget that at the start of this tournament, Ronnie O'Sullivan was talking about how he'd prefer to have a crash bang and a wallop in these home nations matches and have a bit of fun out there, go for a shot, see what happens. Well, the reality is that he's done the precise opposite from ball one this week.
So Carter in first in frame four. He's got the pink waiting. Forge a two frame cushion going into the break. Help if the pink goes to the right corner. Just having a look at that. <clears throat> Easy enough to play for the blue. Eight. I like to get onto that red. That's just to the right of the black, just below the black to the right of it, but I don't think you can get to it this time round. Now, depending on the angle he's got on this ready, he may be able to play the cannon and develop the black. The honours board in the background there. Of course, Carter was very nearly on it. 7-5 up against Stuart Bingham in the Masters final. It's an inspired spell from Bingham after the final interval to deny him a first Triple Crown title. Of course, he's been twice a world finalist, losing on both occasions, of course, to O'Sullivan. Let's not forget what he's had to endure off the table and wonder at how much more he might have won had he not had to do so. 20. Absolutely. Two bouts of cancer. He's overcome. His Crohn's disease, which he's had to battle throughout his pro career, which dates back to the late 90s. It's something he still has to grapple with. In his words, he's been to hell and back. To slow down. Just, just held up. But he's still out there fighting, Joe. Yeah, he's a, a great competitor, a real fighter, on and off the table. You've got to admire him. He's a mean frame of snooker as well. Well, he's outplaying O'Sullivan right now. There's no doubt about that. But he's still got to convert that into a lead at the interval. It's all important now. Oh, that's exactly what he didn't need. Mm. He has missed a couple, Ali Carter, but he hasn't been punished and still hasn't. And that's got to give him lots of confidence, knowing that O'Sullivan is just not firing on any cylinders. Losing confidence by the shot. Well, you don't have to be Miss Marple to figure out that O'Sullivan's adopted a more deliberate approach so far this week. And you can't argue with it because he's in the semi-finals. But maybe in the second half of this semi-final, he has to revert to type and start to up the ante a bit. Because at the moment, the tactic isn't working against Carter. He's more than happy to battle it out with him and take his time. Six. So Sullivan has to try and impose his style, his usual brand of snooker on this match if he is to prevail. Seven. 
Great chance though for Carter to move too clear at the break. Still quite a bit of work to do. Doesn't want to be straight on this red. Well. Pink and black still tied up. And he is straight, so difficult to get back to the blue. Not impossible, but he needs to put a lot of power inside into the cue ball. Well played, found the gap beautifully. Played that deep screw shot with a lot of left hand side, reverse side on the cue ball. 18. Found that gap between the two reds. Look at this again. Look at the side on the cue ball. Whizzes through that little gap there between the reds. Beautiful shot. Got one more red, and then it's difficult. I think the red behind the black spot may be go may go. Well, oh, that's a bonus if the pink goes. Seventy-five left as things stand. So if Carter can develop the reds in the centre of the table, looking good for three-one. And O'Sullivan will have plenty to ponder during the fifteen-minute interval. For me, he's played Ali Carter's game. He's got involved in the safety. He has had chances, Ronnie O'Sullivan, that's for sure, but just hasn't took them. 30. But this type of game suits Ali Carter. There's no doubt about that. Not sure O'Sullivan has ever been over 26 seconds per shot after a mini session in any match. Certainly it would be a rarity. Looks pretty good from uh, behind the pocket. The gap between the two reds. Yeah, a little fortunate again, but you need that little bit of luck. You push the reds on for a plant, and now maybe a chance to put the colour safe. It's got the yellow reasonably safe. I'm surprised he didn't put the green safe. It's 57 the lead then for Carter, 67 still remaining. Yeah. 
went from bad to worse. I don't think he can wait to get to the interval. Needs to find a different gear for sure in the second half of this match. One. Not shake the feeling that at the moment O'Sullivan is playing into Carter's hands. Brain ball has come and gone. Well, clearly O'Sullivan was the heavy favourite at the outset, given his landslide record against Aye. Carter, but it was never going to be straightforward for him. And it's proving to be anything but. Twelve. 69 the advantage, no guarantee that O'Sullivan won't play on. Given the previous so far this afternoon. He needs five snookers. That doesn't help his cause, which is frankly hopeless anyway, of getting the snookers he needs. Only O'Sullivan won. But still no concession. I think the scoreline is evidence of the fact that Carter isn't remotely phased by the prevarication from O'Sullivan today. In fact, he'll be thinking, just keep doing it. Will he change his approach after the interval? I think he's going to have to. If there's going to be any thoughts of Trump O'Sullivan Mark III, of course, Trump has got to get past David Grace this evening. Quarter to seven. Great plot. Wow. Yeah, Carter fully deserves his 3-1 lead. He's battled as he always does. He's not always been clinical this afternoon, but he's certainly been more effective than his opponent. This match is being played Four. in a style that is surely more suited to the captain than the rocket, who's been more like a tortoise thus far. Plenty for Andy, Jimmy and Alan to chew over at the mid-session interval. But for Carter, job very much done thus far. Still, he's got to win three more, of course, to book his place in the final. But at the moment, it's going to plan. Yeah, I just wonder if Ronnie will hit a few balls in the interval. Just try and get his eye in, his touch.
let's not forget he made a terrific century to level this match but that's 23. been rather the exception than the rule for O'Sullivan so far today Carter going quietly about his business very effectively Ali Carter 23 on the track looking for his second consecutive win after losing the first 13 against O'Sullivan and it's so far so very good for Ali Carter at the interesting to see if he does change his approach it bears repeating that his average shot time is for him an incredibly sluggish 26 seconds we know that he's adopted a more deliberate approach at times this week we've seen him playing on for snookers when the cause has been lost but the reality is that at the moment this match is being played on Ali Carter's terms and you've got to think Joe that that has to change if O'Sullivan is to come through yeah uh, well he has competed in the safety he's tried to anyway just hasn't worked I think he really needs to go on the attack rather than compete with the safety I think he needs to open the balls up on the safety shots and force a potting game Ali Carter has made a 71 break but Hasn't made many breaks in the other frames. He's just picking him off. Playing good safety. Oh, and he just rolled in behind the yellow. Otherwise, they would have left a chance. to remember going for just his second victory over O'Sullivan in their 15th meeting Careful attention to that tip. O'Sullivan hoping to land a second Home Nations title this weekend. His first was among one of the finest performances of his career and of course that's saying a lot the English Open 2017 when he demolished Kyron Wilson missing only half a dozen balls in the entire match that were relevant 9-2 victory of course he's been runner-up in this one for the last two years to Trump appearing in his first semi-final in this series Already bagged 20,000 ranking points as he looks to get back into the top 16 in time for the Masters. And he'll be right on the cusp if he wins today. And he'll be guaranteed 30,000 for making the final and of course the 70,000 on offer for the winner. And if he should play Trump, I think he's got a pretty good record against him. He's pushed a red over the corner. And this is what I was saying about O'Sullivan when he's playing safe. His last safety shot, he played off the reds thick, opened the reds up a little bit, and put a little bit of pressure on Ali Carter. Pink and black still tied up. One. And didn't pot it as well as he might have. And couldn't have landed much worse, really. Ronnie 
Sullivan won. Well, if he played for that red to the left corner, that's fraught with danger. I'd be very surprised if Ali Carter took it on. Chance of getting in behind the brown here. Yes, Carter is very effective at playing the percentages. Not, as we know, always been able today to kill the frame off in one go, but he's happy to bide his time. If he loses position, OK, no problem, player safety. Wait for your chance to kill the frame off, and he's done that pretty effectively today so far. Just not getting the run at the moment, O'Sullivan. Had he got closer to the cue, to the pocket, the cue ball would have been closer to the cushion. Left a half chance here. Pot. Decent early chance for Carter, although at the moment high value colours aren't ideal. Five. Well, that couldn't have dropped any worse. Touching ball. Help if it's a touching ball. That helps. Maybe a chance of getting in behind the blue or the brown. Ali Carter, five. Did on the cushion behind the brown, it meant. That's okay. Would have preferred it tight behind the blue. At the moment, being forced to play a game. He can play, without a doubt. He can play a good safety game. But he prefers to be making big breaks, obviously. But hasn't had any chances. And even if he gets in here, as Philip said, big colours. Not in the best of places. Yeah, for Carter, it's very much more of the same from the first half of this match. If he can continue in the vein he has, he'll take some beating. Sullivan's got to make something happen. And that's a good start. Uh, he's trying to, isn't he? That's a great shot. Terrific pot. Trying to punish the loose safety from Ali Carter. Not the best position to be able to get back to the reds. He's got to really thump this brown in. Needs to slow down. Five. I'd like to get the blue back on its spot, but I don't think he can get to that ball at the moment. So I may have to take the brown or yellow again. Could have done without the kiss. Mm. 
Needs a bit of luck. Well, if this goes, you can get the cannon. No. That was an extremely good luck. Bit of good luck. That couldn't have worked out any better. What a kiss that was. Deserves something. He's played some very good shots. To be fair, he hasn't had the best of run. Yes, I think he'll probably feel he was due one there. Oh, and he just wriggled in. But two outstanding pots 60. to get this break underway. The long red and the brown powered in to get position. So, chance for O'Sullivan to get something going here. Not about yellow either. 17. Now, might try and develop the pink here by playing the cannon to the red above the black. He doesn't have to play it. When things have been going, it might not work out. Got the right side of the red to be able to screw across for the black. Now a chance to develop some of the reds. He needs a bit of luck again here. Can he pop the red? If he can, he's done his job. This is his best break aside from the century he made in the second frame. 33. And hasn't he worked hard for it so far? Could play a little cannon to the reds just above the black. It's brought the pink into play. And this is more like it from O'Sullivan. I mean, he opened up this game with a fantastic red, which we'll probably show you in a moment or two. 49. In a couple of good browns. Look at this for a shot, though. He got a lot of screw in the cue ball and then potted a very good brown after it. Yes, and he wasn't getting those reds for the lion's share of that mini session before the interval. Oh, 52 the lead, 56. so he's not safe yet. He's not straight enough on this red. Red and a black would have been enough. 57. One more red needed. Much more like it from O'Sullivan. 63. Exactly what was required after a stodgy first 64. session of the semi-final for him. He's come out firing after the break. Yeah, instead of getting involved in the safety plate, he played a good safety shot, thick off the reds, opening the reds up a little bit. Then he knocked in an absolute Seven. cracker. Yeah, he's 71. made this break from nothing, really, hasn't he? As you mentioned, Joe, when he came to the table, even after that opening red, the black and the pink needed sorting out. And in no time, he did that. He did get a little bit lucky when he, he potted the yellow and got the cannon and finished absolutely perfect on the red to free the black that was an unbelievable bit of luck good shot but still on the frame on O'Sullivan. good break well unlike O'Sullivan himself Ali Carter happy to concede knowing the frame has gone 
So O'Sullivan on the comeback trail, a break of 78. He trails 3-2. Welcome back. Much more like it from Ronnie O'Sullivan in frame five. He's come out firing after the interval. Brilliant opening red here, and he followed it up with that tough brown. He really had to power it in to get position, which he duly did. And then this yellow, well, as Joe mentioned, he got a bit of luck positionally, but he deserved it, frankly. Yeah, it was a, a great shot, by the way, but he couldn't have dropped any better. Big changing point in that frame. And he went on to frame make six. 78. So, Carter's lead shaved to one. Six is the target. Plenty more to look forward to later on today, of course, with defending champion and world number one, Judd Trump, taking on the world number 67, David Grace. Maybe. Just maybe an early chance here. If you can miss the vault, if you can avoid the black. Caught it much too thick. But covered the red to the left corner. This one to the right corner, just a little bit more difficult, but he can play it in such a way as to screw the cue ball towards the middle pocket. And if you can just leave it high. Well, he's looking at playing for the black, but blue looks easier for the pot. Changes his mind. You change your mind, always stand back up again. Readdress it. Good pot. One. Well, he's overscrewed it. He's got in too much. But it's, well, I'm saying just held up. It's tough on the brown, tough on the yellow. He timed that shot so well.
Now that great pot. It's going to get one point for that. What a shame. Again, can he pop this red and miss the black? If he catches the black, he'd be pushing it towards that left corner. Again, so close. Carter with a tough one. Could very well catch the Reds. Carter has had significantly less long pot attempts today than O'Sullivan. He's four out of eight, O'Sullivan six out of 16. shot beautiful shot One. well is that the only place on the table where he can't pot the green very very unfortunate Ali Carter one couldn't have struck it any more cleanly could he but just the one point again great queuing had that cue ball just come off the ball cushion by an inch or two. He'd have been in business potentially. Oh, good return safety from a Sullivan. An area where he's been below his best today, currently at 76.9% success. Carter in the 90s, which is outstanding. He's always been a terrific tactical player, Carter. Just a very tough all-round match player, full stop. Two hours of action, frame six of a possible 11. Still potentially a very long way to go in this match. Carter will have been very satisfied with his pre-interval work, but mindful at the same time that he still had a lot to do to turn it into a match-winning opportunity. Well, again, he's pushed one over both pockets. So he's in uh, Sullivan's hands here. Black not available at the moment. Well, he could play for the pink to the right center, but risky to play that because he'd have to play it with a lot of drag on the cue ball to hold for it. So he may play down for the blue. Oh, that was an excellent kiss. Well, Rub's just favouring O'Sullivan again at the moment.
while taking the more difficult road to try and clear that black area. Eight. Definitely encouraging signs though for O'Sullivan fans since the interval. Not the ante as he had to do. He was going nowhere really. He looks more focused to me as well. Started with that long screw shot in the last frame. 13. It's lost the cue ball there though. Didn't really want to take this red. It was the other red to the left corner. It was blame four. 14. Not a bad little shot, left-handed. No, oh, that's wow. terrible. Disappointed Minnesota with that one. 14, Adi Carter, five. But it was a couple of shots previously. He played for the red into the left corner, had to play the one to the right corner, and it was difficult to get the right side of the blue from that, from that red. And that was the start of the problems. If he plays the red, that's nearest the black cushion. That frees the black. It's him to see what he's going to play here. That would be an attacking shot to play. Well, I can't believe he didn't play that shot. Free the black, get that cue ball in behind the brown and yellow. It's an attacking shot. Still an attacking shot that he played, had he got it. More risk. So O'Sullivan with an immediate chance to put the disappointment of cannoning into the brown just now out of his mind. Eventually, engineer a chance to level this match. Well, he got a lot of side on the cue ball there. Too much, really. He was playing the other side of the blue, but he can take the blue or the black here. this week is O'Sullivan's desire. Seven. That is what he was playing the last time round. Just got too much side in it. No good position on the blue to play anywhere. Telestrator. That's an excellent red to play for. Now the black goes into both pockets. What a thinker. Oh, he's overhit it and be disappointed again with that. 20. He's overhit that by a long way. The fact that he was on the stretch contributed to that a little. But this needs some potting. There's pressure on this one. Digging down on the white. Difficult pot. 21. Oh, what a shot. It wasn't just the pot. He was playing the cannon as well, which he, he negotiated absolutely beautifully. That was a terrific pot. That. Yeah, this is a different O'Sullivan okay. now. 
Not quite firing on all cylinders, the rocket, but... 29. Just have a look at this shot, if we can find it again, because it was such a good shot. It's definitely beginning to show what he's capable of. Spotted the black last time round, but look at the 36. cannon that he got. Look at this cannon. Just got it to perfection. 37. As you say, Philip, he looks a different man, doesn't he? Yeah, that average shot time is dropping significantly now as he gets into a rhythm. 44. Looking at the scoreboard. 45. Black and Carter can only tie. This is what O'Sullivan can do in a very short space of time. He can change the entire feel, the entire dynamic of a match with a couple of big breaks made in intimidatingly quick fashion. Well, there's nothing he can do about this, that's for sure. 60. Minus 78 in the last frame. Trying to develop that red to make a century in this one. Sixty six. Oh, can you get the double? Ronnie O'Sullivan, sixty six on the front. Well, the century would have been nice, but O'Sullivan will make do with 66. He has found a couple of extra gears since the interval, and it's right back in the balance at 3 all. Engrossing stuff here at the Marshall Arena in our first Northern Ireland Open. Semi-final with Ronnie O'Sullivan fighting back. 78 and 66 since he fell 3-1 behind. His pot success is still down at 
84%, which is indicative of how he struggled really before the interval. And remember, the one frame he did win in the first four was a century, but he's just looked a lot more engaged frame seven. and with it, frankly, frame in this back. second part of the match. And now all to play for again at three all. It's a best of five frame match from here. Carter's turn to try and respond. Yes, and that's a good response. Excellent pot. And again, he's a little unfortunate losing the cue ball, just going into Bork. He knocked in a beauty. In, I don't know if it was the last frame or the frame before just run a little too close to the brown. Any cards are one. You know, is that he shouldn't leave anything on here yet. Sullivan. Good pot. It's got him one point. Yeah, it's happened a few times for Carter today. He's knocked in a good long one, but just failed to get the desired position on a bought colour to continue the break. But it'll feel good knocking the red in. Pretty good from long range today. Six out of ten. It's decent. That was a very good pot, wasn't it? And it was awkward queuing there, and he's got a very good safety. Yeah, Looks like it could be. Similar type of shot to what he's just played. So important not to get too much side on the cue ball. Slip past the reds, he'd leave a red on. He left a red on. Here's not. Great return. Great return. It's a possibility. Could also come off the right hand side cushion. He's looking at the two cushion escape, but I don't think there's any need to play that shot. No, just playing into the pack of reds. I thought it was a little bit more dangerous to play that sh that shot. Had he caught the red, touching ball, got nearest to there. Touching ball, both reds is called.
doesn't want the full ball kiss. Very dangerous to take this red on. Looks like he's playing it. Lots of right hand side on the cue ball and that made the pot so much more difficult. But he managed to avoid the reds and that's the main thing. Yeah, so Sullivan is up the ante the other side of the interval and now it's down to Carter to try and do likewise. Well, one thing that's changed, Philip, is that O'Sullivan's not missing like he was in the earlier frames, which was giving Carter chances. Yes, he looks altogether more sharp now, doesn't he, than he did early on. He's in a bit of trouble here, though. Before he arrived at the Crucible in the summer, this was the tournament, of course, that he made his only ranking final in last season. It was a pretty modest season, actually. He won the Invitational Shanghai Masters, beating Murphy in a cracking final, 11-9. But that aside, it was relatively slim pickings. Until, of course, he reminded us what a great player he is at the World Championship. But today, he's had to really grind it out to get back into contention but he's been happy to do that this week when required his match with Elliot Slesser who of course have beaten him in their two previous meetings handsomely dug in there for the win he's in a bit of trouble there O'Sullivan but he thought his way out of it Sullivan was missing earlier, Joe. That's something that Carter's been very good at not doing today. Yes, he's broken down a few times. He's lost position and has needed multiple chances to see off frames, but he's only missed seven balls all match. 93%. Very good. Yeah, good point. Hasn't been making a lot of big breaks. This is a mistake from O'Sullivan. He needs a bit of luck here. He's got a fantastic cue ball. But as he covered that red nearest the right corner. The answer's no. He can pop the red. Tight under the cushion so it's not a gimme. gone anywhere just potted it a little thick if you just look at this if he catches it thin he misses those reds looks like just a safety but he did force the mistake Important little duel here with the Reds looking pretty inviting for whoever gets in. Well, he's certainly given it his all, Ali Carter. The red behind the black, if he can catch it thin enough. <coughs> and that looks pretty good to me. Well, they both played some fantastic safety.
I think he's trying to leave the cue ball down by the black cushion. Yeah, and uh, he didn't get that cue ball close enough to the cushion. Well, will O'Sullivan take one of these reds on? Not easy, any of these reds. And there's one to the middle also. All difficult. It's easy there, doesn't it? Somehow got to get to the blue. Great pot. Terrific pot. One. And I'm saying he, he's trying to get to the blue. That was a much better ball to play for because he wasn't leaving anything had he missed it. But to stun through the reds there, just missing them all, was an excellent shot. And as I say, he took the pressure off himself by playing down there for the brown. He's in again. Five. Ideally yet. Got a different look about him now, O'Sullivan. Some of the old swagger has returned since the interval. Six. Well, even pinched a little on the pocket there to get good position on the black. And Ali Carter. Even though only 15 points have been scored in this frame, we'll be fearing the worst already. 13. Sure, you're right, Philip. Fourteen. Very rare that Ronnie asks for the cue ball to be cleaned. to kick at this stage of the game though yeah not that having the cue ball cleaned is any guarantee that you won't get a kick but i guess it must help a bit or at least it does in the mind of the player well they're both using different kinds of chalk so don't blame him sullivan is more a traditionalist when it comes to chalk. He uses the old-fashioned stuff. I recall in one match, he actually tried two different types of chalk in the same match. 22. He is using the new chalk at the moment, though. He was talking about it, and yeah, he's using the red. Red chalk. I think he said it was from Belgium. There you go. You can see it there. It's blue. <laughs> I was going to say. Look very red. Thirty. <laughs> but when we get a chance to look at Ali Carter's, you'll see that he's using the traditional triangle green. Notice the ball that since the interval, uh, Sullivan is no longer fretting about his tip either. He just 35. looks in a different frame of mind now. And he's beginning to fancy the job. Thirty-six. You know what a great front runner he is, and you'd certainly fancy him to get in front here for the first time. Forty-three. Typical, typical example there that he could have played the cannon, but when you don't have 44. to, why play it? All the reds will go. Ding yesterday when he was playing he was 2-0 up he was flying full of confidence but he played a black and went into the reds and I didn't think it was the right shot to play there was plenty of shots that he and plenty of reds that he could have played for but he decided to go into them and, and unfortunately he didn't land on one 
48. Another very good positional shot. Sullivan. 49. Just a delight to watch him play. He's got his confidence in flying. Fifty-five. Carter scored just fourteen points since he led three-one. He can only tie now, so this easy red. Sixty-one. Taken three frames on the bounce in in style. It with class. And playing now at his usual. Brisk pace. He needed to change the pattern of the match, and he's done just that. Three pretty quick fire frames from O'Sullivan, but 70. looking at his brilliant best in amongst them as per usual. His long potting has improved, so he's creating chances for himself now. Now it's Carter that's got to come up with the answers. 78. More than capable. 78. Yeah, he played some very good safety shots in this frame. Ali Carter 85. knocked in a couple of great reds, but unfortunately 86. didn't land on the colour. a terrific red wasn't it from O'Sullivan playing down for the brown set up this chance 93 very missable red under pressure yeah I did say at the time though that he didn't get that cue ball close enough to the black cushion Ali and O'Sullivan 93 cost him misses the yellow so no century but Ali Carter is now under the cosh having bossed the early stages of this match he's lost three on the bounce pretty quickly O'Sullivan leads Sullivan 93.
Three quick fire frames from Ronnie O'Sullivan in three quarters of an hour. Breaks of 78, 66 and 93 have given this match a very different feel. He's in front for the first time. 3-1 behind at the interval. He's found his mojo. And Carter now has to try and respond. O'Sullivan within two frames of his third consecutive Northern Ireland Open final. 93. 14th win in 15 attempts the over the frame. captain. Ali Carter to break. Does Carter respond? Well, not the best break off from Ali Carter. Catching the reds much too thick, he nearly hit the jaws of the middle pocket. He's had very little table time since the interval. I mentioned he scored just 14 points in those three frames. It's the poorest shot I've seen him play. What? He has competed, and as I say, in the last frame, he knocked in two terrific reds, but didn't finish on a colour either, either time. Had to play the safety. And just what he didn't need, O'Sullivan straight back in. Fresh from that break of 93. Coming down for that red by the black straight away. Him with being just a, a fraction closer. Four. Sullivan's pot success climbing all the time, getting up towards 87 now. In the high 70s at one stage. I've been informed by my good friend Colin Phillips that it's Tam Pyro Chalk that one is using, and it's from Finland. Twelve. Don't all rush out to buy it at once. He needs some more for the final if he gets there. Now deliberately left the cue ball short on this red so he could open more reds up. 20. Managed to knock out another two, possibly three. He's flying around the table now. It's a very different looking O'Sullivan, isn't it? It's amazing what a bit of confidence does, isn't it? 28. It really is, because he was lacking in it so much before the interval. I don't know what he did in the interval, but whatever it was, he wants to keep that in his armory. Again, deliberately left this angle on this red 33. so he could open the reds up in potting it. He's got to be careful of the enough in the middle if he plays it at strength. 34. And he was aware of it, that's why he didn't play it with screw. And he's nudged more out. little gap there in the reds to go into. Miss the red directly above the black or catch it really thin. And look at that. It's worth another look at that shot because he plays it so well. 
he misses the red directly above the black and then with the whiz on the cue ball it comes through the reds 49. and develops them all and they're all there for the taking he hasn't found just an extra gear since the interval he's found several this is pretty intimidating stuff now from O'Sullivan 56 to keep it going though sorry for it Helpless in his chair. Nothing you can do from there, Joe. No, nope, he's got to rely on Ronnie missing an easy one or a kick or something, but you just can't see him missing. He's just focused. So focused. It was a poor break off, though, wasn't it? It certainly was. And it looks like it's going to cost him dearly. Full stretch, left handed. Needs another red in the colour. Taking any liberties with this red, and for obvious reasons, he's that close to winning his fourth straight frame here in under an hour. 65. This has been a magnificent break. How quickly he can turn a precarious position into one of strength. <clears throat> Just remind you of how he got in for this. Carter took a while before breaking off as though he was psyching himself up for it, conscious of the need to make a good one, but he didn't. Superb, absolutely superb. 17 years of age when he defeated Hendry for his first ranking title at the UK Championship in 1993. He turns 45 in a couple of weeks and he's still producing snooker like that. Pure magic, the rocket has begun to fire and then some, 5-3 up.
Paddy Carter lovingly tending to his cue. We uh, mentioned earlier that he's had some adjustments made to it and uh, he's rather fond of linseed oil. And that's what he's sniffing. As far as I'm aware, that's not on the banned list, but whether it's performance enhancing or not, I'm not sure he could do with a bit of performance enhancement right now because he's been blown off the table in the last four frames by a rejuvenated Ronnie O'Sullivan who's begun to flow as only he can and he's one frame away from another Northern Ireland Open final. 5-3, two up with three to play. Yes, only had one shot in the last frame. Ali Carter, that was a good one. And he paid the ultimate price. 14 points scored since the interval for Carter, who of course led 3-1, barely had a look in since. One or two good long pots, which led to nothing positionally. Apart from that, he's been warming his seat. How impressive has O'Sullivan been since the interval? Different player. But the job's not done yet. Carter knows how to dig deep with the very best of them. He will fight for every ball. Well, one thing he doesn't want to do is open those reds up. I don't think he's got any choice. There they are, they're open. And that, well, was it okay, that kiss? Or has he left? Judging by his face, he's left it on. Still not easy, full length of the table. pot but he couldn't control the cue ball possibly the green he's looking at the green but the red that's to the left of the black, if he catches it full in the face, then brown. he leaves a, a chance at that red. So that's why he's playing the brown. Ronnie O'Sullivan one. Nicely played. And again, well thought out. Yes, he's been pin sharp. In the second half of this match, conscious of the need to find something extra in his game, and he certainly has delivered. Uh, so just looking at the possible three ball plant. Another half chance here. Long potting has improved. Yes, I think it was four out of 12 before the interval. Since then, it's been five out of eight, much more like it. The whole game has been raised significantly. up against it now Carter of course he knows one more error could be fatal
the day. That we could have been tight in behind the brown. As it is, half a chance of getting that cue ball back there in the shot. Just aware of Red knocking something over this right corner. Target the brown and the green. I'm too thin. It's okay. side of the table it's going to create problems but he's looking at the pot oh what a beauty great shot from Ali Carter Terrific pot, and that cue ball again just run on a little too far for comfort for the green. Brown's much more difficult pot. It's actually still leading Carter in most of the stats. Pot success 93, very good. He's still only missed seven balls all match. Long pot success two out of three. Safety success is still better than O'Sullivan's. It's only in the total points where O'Sullivan's motoring in the last four frames has overtaken him. Again, having to settle for one point off a very good opening red. I think it was time there to open his shoulders and try and get himself back in the game. He hasn't played a particularly good safety. Sullivan can see this red behind the black spot. Got himself another chance by playing the safety. Catching that red much too thick. It's a matter of whether he can avoid that red that's closest to the black cushion. Attempting the pot. One break of any significance today for Carter, the 71 in the very first frame. Yeah, good pot. One. Oh, surely not. He was on the pink to the middle. Still on, well, now I'm not sure. I'm not sure if he is. So it's a thin cut on the black. Blue. It looks like it goes there, but he's right behind the shot. not even looking at it again so there's no doubt that the pink doesn't go what a pressure on this though another good pot and this time he is on another red Barely had a sniff since he led 3-1. Well, 
point of no return for Carter. Created this chance for himself. 60. Uh, plenty of work to do with quite a few reds far from ideal at the moment. Twenty-three. Just a little short of pace, but it should be okay. Short of pace. Once again, just a little shorter pace, and again, there's pressure on this one. Thirty six. Slip laid, and now in prime position. Far so good in Carter's bid to stop the rot. Her Sullivan with a four frame burst, well 42. under an hour. Just waiting, ready to pounce. Can he get the cannon to those three reds near the right corner? Answer. And he's on them. Forty seven. It's ideally on this red, but he might just be able to come out for the pink or blue, stunning off the other red. Decided to play the double kiss. It looked easier to s screw onto the red half ball, send the cue ball down the table. So it's not over yet, this frame. Although it's a tough table at the moment, a few shots it may not be. So maybe time to put something safe. Well, I think I'd have favoured a ball safe rather than the seven points. So 
so Carter falls just short of his second half century of the afternoon but at least he has a strong foothold in this frame that he needs to keep his hopes of a final place alive Sullivan's four frame burst for the time being arrested Just a reminder that tonight, semi-final two, defending champion Judd Trump against David Grace, the world number 67. Our coverage gets underway at a quarter to seven. Trump, of course, chasing his third consecutive Northern Ireland Open title. Will he be facing O'Sullivan for the third time in a row? He might be tempted here. Looks that sat there waiting for him. Make a pot. an area of O'Sullivan's game which has improved markedly since the first four frames. Could have done with just missing that black bell. Well, he played the pink so he could get the angle on the red to be able to disturb those reds. And if this works out, Ali Carter may wish he'd have well put a ball safe rather than trying to get seven points for the black. Eight. Well, <laughs> they're all developed bar one. Worth another look at that shot because he played the red on the cushion to hit the other reds as well. 15. The big target was the two reds, but he played the red onto the other reds and he couldn't have worked out any better. Well, I suppose it could. The other red could have come off the cushion. 16. And that's potentially Carter's last saviour here. Everything else out in the open. Oh, well, now Carter 22. will wish he'd have put something safe. This really would be the icing on the cake if O'Sullivan could clear up here the victory. 23. A couple of sublime shots to release the awkward reds. Well, when he came to the table, Philip, well, you wouldn't have said that there's a clearance on, would you? No, that's how quickly truly great players can change 26. the shape of a frame, of which O'Sullivan is undoubtedly one, perhaps the greatest. 27. Well, nobody can play the game like this man when he's on form. Carter, as always, has given it everything today. Potentially for the 14th 32. time in 15 attempts could prove to be in vain. This match and this frame now at the mercy of O'Sullivan. 34. The only awkward ball is the brown. Being left handed would help him. 37. Just over screwed that one. Not straight enough on the brown. It's going to be difficult to get to the blue. Like Grimace from O'Sullivan. 41. So, one good pot. That's all it's going to take to put him into the final. One good pot.
oh, clean as a whistle. It's a different man. Yeah, this has been magnificent stuff from O'Sullivan since falling 3-1 behind. 52. Carter powerless to do anything about it. 59, the match, from the subdued to the sublime, Ronnie O'Sullivan, for the third time in three seasons, reaches the Northern Ireland Open final. He has defeated Ali Carter by six frames to three.